That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Mean Girls. The musical version of the 2004 hit film, uh, which is directed by Samantha Jane and Arturo Perez Jr., is being released courtesy of Paramount on January 12th, 2024. You said directorial debut? No. Well, Samantha Jane's directorial debut, uh, who she's worked with Arturo Perez Jr. before on several shorts, he has also directed a couple documentaries, including Where Have All the Flowers Gone and McCartney Grand Central. Hmm. Katie Heron is a hit with the plastics, an A-list girl click at her new school when she makes the mistake of falling for Aaron Samuels, the ex-boyfriend of alpha plastic Regina George. We, we have a Patreon episode review about the 2004 film. Yes. Which we just watched like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. What's your pull quote for this film? Sweet and entertaining, it's unclear what the overall point is of revisiting Mean Girls as a musical. It's really just saying... And though the faces may have changed, the hassles are just the same. Oh, shout out to Strangers with Candy. Mine. Surprisingly, this modern update does not stray far from the 2004 film, which is not a bad thing. I thought this movie was cute. Mm -hmm. it, but comparing the two, it's like, a lot hasn't changed, I guess, has mm -hmm. it? We still think that women aren't good at math. Uh, kids are still really shitty to one another. Well, perfect segue. I wanted to start with what's different about the 2024 movie versus the 2004 movie. There's music. Number one, it's a musical. Mm -hmm. um, so I was reading about that because I'm not familiar with the musical. Um, but part of a lot of the differences relate to having to accommodate the addition of some songs. Mm -hmm. We'll get to the songs a little bit later. But some of the things that are different... Katie's father is not in the picture. Mm -hmm. So it appears that her mother, played by... Jenna Fisher. Is a single mom. We should know from The Office. Yep. And Slither. Oh, Slither? I think she's... Did she used to be married to James Gunn? Oh. There's a story about how and why she's in that movie. Uh, Janice, we don't see her working in this film. No. No. Because in the 2004 film, we're at Janice's job like three times. Mm -hmm. That's where we get the face cream to give Regina. That's not in this film. Uh, also, in this film, Janice is a lesbian. Yes. Which got... I think is kind of funny because she's upset she's being called a pyro les, but, yeah, but you are, girl, you are. <laughs> but before you're ready to tell the world. Sure, of know. course. Coach Carr isn't sexually assaulting students in this film. This time it's John Hamm. It's just John Hamm being a weirdo. Mm -hmm. Uh we don't see Tina Fey's character working a second job. Mm -hmm. uh, Tina Fey and Tim Meadows are a couple in this movie, mm -hmm. which was cute. And they both look great. They do, mm -hmm. yeah. And then a lot of the language has changed. I was reading an article, uh, Tina Fey was asked about like how, like what kind of changes she made and she specifically talked about how they're not using words like bitches, whores, and sluts because in modern day that doesn't seem to be as big of an issue as it was. Another example is in the Burn book. In the 2004 film, one girl is referred to as a fat virgin. And in this film, that same girl is now being called a horny shrimp. So little changes to the language were made. Little changes. But overall, it feels, having just watched the 2004 film, like, I was surprised at how much stayed the same. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, do I want to use the word iconic? But memorable lines uh, that are lifted straight all of those are in this movie. Yes. Yeah. Except for Boo, you whore. Right. So let's talk about the music. I was, so I think it's forgettable, but I was reading that 14 songs were cut from the musical when figuring out what to put in this movie. So I'm thinking like, damn, what were those songs like if these were the ones we got? Like, <laughs> I didn't hate the music. I think a lot of it's forgettable. Like off the top of my head, Gretchen Wiener's song is just, you could have cut 15 songs. Uh, but there were a couple that I liked, or at least the lyrical content of. Let me tell the story. I got ahead of myself. So for people who don't know, uh, the main character, Katie, she has never been to high school because she's always been homeschooled. And for the past X amount of years, she's been living in Kenya, Africa. So her joining this new school as a junior is like an entirely new world. And immediately she makes a couple of friends, two misfits named Janice and Damien. Mm -hmm. Janice is the pyro les and Damien is uh, too gay to function. Mm -hmm. 
but very quickly she is taken in by the plastics these three popular girls regina george gretchen wieners and karen mm -hmm. whatever karen's the dumb one in this movie it's not really made clear that gretchen is the rich one and then regina is like the most popular one she's like the alpha mm -hmm. and they are trying to change katie like make her more like them but where things take a turn is Katie has a crush on Aaron Samuels, Regina's ex-boyfriend, and Regina doesn't like that. So she makes sure to show Katie that by kissing him in front of her. So Katie gets upset. So now her, with the help of her two misfit, misfit friends, try to destroy Regina. But it backfires because Regina gets mad, and they have this thing called a burn book mm -hmm. that they've been filling out since they were in grade school, I guess, where they're talking bad about all the other students in school. And Regina takes it to school. It's That's different from the 2004 film. In the 2004 film, Regina makes a bunch of copies of the book and like throws it all around the school. And turns it in herself. And turns it in herself. In this movie, she just takes the book and puts it on the ground. Because in this film, now we have social media. So she's trusting that someone's going to grab it and they're going to start taking pictures and posting it online. And they do. So this all leads to an assembly where all the junior girls have to basically work it out and they express their grievances in the process. Regina gets mad, runs away from Katie and Regina gets hit by a bus. <laughs> but the final scene is the school prom and we find out that Katie has won prom queen and mathletics. And Mathletics, which we can get to because there's an important cameo in that scene. Mm -hmm. But part of Katie's acceptance speech is that I think I won because y'all think I pushed Regina in front of that bus. So this is not ideal. But she uses that time to basically give a really nice message about how we need to be nicer to one another. And then it's all kumbaya at the end. But we should talk about the cameo. And, and we don't get a uh, snippet of the up-and-coming plastics. We, we don't get that final scene. No, but they kind of incorporate it into the prom because then we show like, oh, the, the cheerleaders are dancing with the nerds mm -hmm. and the jocks are dancing with the theater kids. So, but yeah, we don't get the new version of the plastics, which I guess is hopeful. Sure. But yes, there's a major spoiler. So the mathletics, which is because we know Katie's good at math and... Katie's responsible for accusing Tina Fey's character of selling drugs. <laughs> so part of Katie's punishment is that Tina Fey says, you need to join uh, Mathletics. Well, extra credit, because she's been purposely she's been failing. failing. Yeah. So they go and they win, but the, of the officiant of the Mathletics is Lindsay Lohan. Oh my God. Which I always like seeing her. Yeah, she looks great. Uh, God, it'd be nice to see her have a decent comeback that's not a cruddy Christmas movie. Uh, sure. I think it's funny that they chose that for her cameo when, you know, it's been 20 years since the first film. Technically, she's old enough to have a 15, 16-year-old. She, she could have been the mom. I kind of wanted her to be Katie's mom. But, yeah. I, you know. But I was also reading that Tina Fey wanted all the originals to be in the film in some capacity, but schedules didn't allow, so they did what they could. So I'm grateful for that, I guess. And um, Is that how we're explaining Rachel McAdams' absence? Oh, I mean, that's just what I read. Okay, I only have a few notes. I think the funniest line in this movie, which is new, is when we first see Katie go to school, her first teacher, I think, is like a creative writing teacher, and his name is Mr. Rapp. And he is like rapping and he keeps saying, my name is Mr. Rap and I take no. And of course he wants all the students to say crap and he keeps saying it and no one's participating. And finally, when he says, my name is Mr. Rap and I take no, a student yells out, care of yourself. I thought that was so funny. I laughed all night. I was laughing all day today thinking. About I thought another good scene was um, at the assembly when there's the same line about the girl with the wide set vagina and Tim Meadows turns it over to Tina Fey to school these girls and she's about to break out into song. And her voice cracks and she's like, you know what it reminded me of on Drag Race when Monet Exchange was going to do like a mm -hmm. shablam and then she just says, I'm not going to do it. That's how it felt. Another funny scene to me is we're told that in honor of International Women's Day, 
the cafeteria is going to be serving vegan confident Joannes instead of sloppy Joes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there were there were a few nice uh, additional touches from so, Tina, from Tina Fey's screenplay. So more things I liked: the actor playing Damien. Oh yeah, uh, Jaquel Spivy, who's Tony nominated for starring as uh, an usher in the Broadway play A Strange Loop. I really liked him, and I think I liked him better than Daniel Franzese in the role. To be fair, he's had a lot more experience, I think, than Mr. Franzese had at that time. But well, because yeah. if you listen to our Patreon, I thought that Daniel Franzese's acting in the 2004 film was a little stiff. So like you said, this man has more, I think, chops. But yeah, I really preferred him. Mm -hmm. um, the plastics. So what did you think of these girls compared to the originals? I think as a core, we discussed this and I think you agree that the, the trio are really good and better in the first one. But yes. um, I really did like Renee Rapp as uh, Regina. Oh, I, I really, I don't know who this lady is, but I really liked her. I loved how she looked. Her voice is amazing. Her attitude. And she's really singing that song with Megan Thee Stallion, Not the My end Fault. Credits. Yeah. I really, really liked her voice. And the songs that I do recall from the film somewhat, not the lyrics, but the vibe, her voice and the vibe of those songs reminded me of Billie Eilish. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really liked her. The The young lady playing Karen is beautiful, and I think she's good at pretending to be stupid. Aventika is her name, and we saw her in that film Senior Year with Rebel Wilson, that one where she hit her head and woke up. 20 years oh, later. Oh, right? I, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, what a fantastic name as well. But I liked her little Halloween song. Her Halloween song the, is cute. The choreo is pretty fun. Well, and that her dance break in that song, because in our the Book of Clarence review, I criticized the dance break in that film. I thought the dance break with this girl in Mean Girls was better than the dance break in the Book of Clarence. Mm -hmm. The only one... So the young lady playing Gretchen Wieners? Mm-hmm. Uh, B.B. Wood. Who's I, in Love, Victor. Oh. I thought she was sweet, but I definitely preferred Lacey Chabert mm -hmm. from the first one. Sure. I think Lacey's given more character ticks to work with. Yes, because mm -hmm. in the 2004 film, Gretchen, we can see her kind of snap. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I'm going to get this bitch. In this film, Gretchen seems more kind of sad that her friend doesn't appreciate her. So it's not as fun. I just kind of felt bad for her. And then of course, uh, Angry Rice from Mare of Easttown is playing Katie. Who you said I didn't care for in Mare of Easttown? You can go back and look at the review. You All you did was complain about Shaban. Well, I mean, I said what I said, but in this movie, I really liked her. And I might say I liked her better than Lindsay Lohan from the 2004 film because I thought she, the the transition from her being a naive student to kind of taking on this plastics mentality, the transition was more drastic. Mm -hmm. And actually, I, I think the key scene that made me think that is the scene where Gretchen tells Regina, you can't sit here. And then they say, well, what does Katie think? And Katie turns around and crosses her legs and gives a look like rules are rules. And I think that attitude is what I wanted from Lindsay Lohan in the first film. Sure, yeah. I think part of that ability, though, is the, for that transition to happen is that uh, almost all of these uh, actors seem like actual high school students. Sure. Whereas in the 2004 Mean Girls version, you know, Rachel, Mac Rachel McAdams was well beyond being in high school. And, and I think you can tell. Although I really liked her. I did too. But, but yeah. I agree. Because Rachel McAdams seems like a woman, pairing her with Lindsay Lohan just felt kind of odd. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in this one, it feels more comparable. And then Janice is played by Auli uh, Caravaglio, uh, who did the voice of Moana. Oh, so a fabulous singer. Yeah. I think I didn't... I definitely prefer old Janice. Because old Janice seems emo, and then her frustration about her friend dogging her out and the fact that she's not a lesbian. In this film, it feels like, well, bitch, you did burn up her backpack and you are a lesbian. So, I mean, I don't know that her calling you a pyro les is that bad. And then she, I, like, I just don't picture Janice belting out these Broadway musical type songs. Right. And Janice has a song towards the end, after, like during the assembly where all the girls apologize. That I just didn't think fit that character. I can agree with that, but I did really like the lyrical sure. content, uh, the sentiments of that song, because I agreed with a lot of what we're saying. I was. I, I also maybe thought that 
if Janice were to sing, she would have more of like an edgy vibe to her. Yeah, it's almost like the style of her song should have been completely different. Yes. Um, but then, and, and then we're also forgetting amongst the adults, there's Ashley Park from the film Joyride, who is, is she the French teacher? That's right. Mm -hmm. She's the French teacher. I thought she was cute. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we talked about Busy Phillips. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's an impressive ensemble. Oh, uh, Aaron, played by Christopher Briney, who you know from the film Dali Land. That's how I know him. You know, I, he was fine. I feel like that character, I don't think that character had much to do in the first film either, except just be the, the object of, of affection. two people's desires. Mm -hmm. But um, I did like that he w looked like a regular kid. Like he's not this hunky whatever. He seems kind of gangly. and <laughs> He looks like Dane DeHaan to me, like he could be his younger brother. So I, so I, I liked that. And then there's another uh, cameo. Oh, who? Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, so there's a point when, at, like at the point where Katie gets mad and she wants to start dogging Regina out, we see that Regina is on the football field, maybe like, like oh, I think it's probably when she was nominated for prom queen. She's on the football field and they hit her with the sprinkler. Mm -hmm. So now she's all wet and her makeup's running. But of course, Regina looks sexy and fabulous. So it goes viral. And we see like a montage of people on social media talking about, I think it's like hashtag Regina challenge, mm -hmm. where all these girls have wet hair and like smeared mascara and eyeliner. And one of the people is Megan the Stallion. And then we get her again at the end. And she says what? She says, how do I get this off my algorithm? How do I get this girl off my algorithm? Which made me think of, she has that line in Savage about, if it ain't about the money, then you know I'm going to ignore it. So, yeah. Like, why are you checking for it anyway? But... And I thought that was cute too, because then Megan the Stallion's featured in the end credits song. Mm -hmm. um, I did enjoy this movie. Yeah. I, I, again, I think most our discussion afterwards is also a lot about who is this really for? Uh, I guess I would say elder millennials. <laughs> Which makes me think that it should have been maybe rated R and more edgy. But, you know, if it's staying true to what it was, then I think, I mean, this really is like a replica of the first film, just with songs in it. Right. So it, it, it's almost just for the fan base that's already established. What would you give Mean Girls 2024? Three. I would give this film three out of five as well. Join us on Patreon. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, my God.